Hello. Good morning. Oh, now what's your time? Oh, it's 1 p.m. <laughs> so yeah. All right. All, all right. Hello. 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 Um, participants, here we go. Okay. So, hello, uh, Jens. Uh, yes, good. This this your first participation on serverless workflow? It is. Yes, it is indeed. Do you want to be associated with any company in the attendee list? Uh, yes. We we can we can do it. It's uh, or maybe I'd I uh, edit. Let me just quickly type it. Here we go. That's the one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, and I forgot who's behind that uh, abbreviation K sank one K S A N K one. Kasi. Ah, Kasi. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Max. Hey. Okay, and we have, yeah, and myself, of course. Um, so, Tiomir, do you happen to know if Ricardo wanted to join or? No, he mentioned today he had an ear infection, so he's taking oh, the day off. Oh, bad. Uh, next time, hopefully. And I have an excuse from Karina, so yeah, we're good. Okay, um, so let's start. Any community questions? Um, yeah, in, in general, um, um, so questions are best to ask on GitHub issues. Is that how you do things? Because at the moment we are looking at the specification, there are a few open questions. I mean, it's version 0.5, so questions I'm assuming are expected. Yeah, I think but if you still... can name particular fields of the specification that you have questions to, it's easiest in writing because you can refer to the lines, you know, and uh, also if you need general guidance, uh, feel free to ask any questions now. All right. Yeah, no, we just we just more or less started this week to have a look at this stuff. Um, looks interesting. There were a couple of um, questions. Um, yeah, then the Golang SDK, we found a couple of issues mm -hmm. we raised so far. And... Um, yeah, but if the general questions are going into GitHub as well, then we're just doing it that way. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you, you. And, and welcome to the specification effort. It's uh, great to have you about. No, thank you very much. It's an interesting concept, I must admit. Okay, um, so, uh, KubeCon call for papers is up. I think uh, there are two weeks left if anybody wants to um, send in their application for KubeCon talk. And then um, website update. I'm not sure if we have collected any feedback so far. If so, they would have appeared here in the issues, right? Uh, no, there is no the ongoing one. It was the move to Netlify. Um, I think we presented it in the last community call and I really like um, the design. It's a it's, uh, very good overview. Um, but just one thing now that I got Karina's excuse for today's meeting, um, she mentioned a YouTube channel. I probably have to ping her about this personally, but she hasn't been on the meetings for the last two weeks. Uh, but Tiomi, have you received any information on that? No, I haven't. Sorry, I. I no, no, never mind. On the domain like serverless workflow, I mean the email serverless workflow at gmail.com, and I happily share, would share that, and then we could use that to the, create a YouTube channel. We could create okay. like a community password, you know, for for people mm -hmm. that want to maintain it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> not nothing from Karina, but uh, yeah, but. That will be really nice to do, I agree. 
Yeah. Um, are you aware that there is this um, key vault solution that the CNCF is using for projects to maintain secrets that are um, community owned? No, but that's not. Oh, if not, okay, then I can I can look it up and I'll send you the link. Okay. Um, project roadmap. Have we collected? Uh, sorry, I, I'm not up to date with the issues. It's a crazy day. Um, so let me just pull it, pull the page up. We also had uh, John join. Hi, John. If you wanted to add him to the. Hey, John. Hi. Do you want to be associated with any company? I'm from Microsoft. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I think the big issues that we have is uh, oh, not issues. I, I think it's reflected in our issues list. Uh, one is the JSON patch schema support. Um, and then, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah, Ricardo is not here, so we can mm -hmm. all discuss it probably next time. But uh, in there, yeah, I added the uh, workflow compensation. Yes. Uh, so that's a big thing. That's a big PR that I would like everybody to take a look at, and we'll discuss it later if we need to. And last time I mentioned the cloud event subscription and, and uh, stuff that they're adding to their specification, which I think would be very nice if we can use and figure out how the best ways for the workflows um, to, to utilize it. But yeah, we'll, more to that next time or maybe. Do you want to say a few lines about the compensation? Um, yeah, if you want to. Uh, so recently we have added or updated uh, the air handling and the retries. And I've created that uh, video demo and we can link it. Yeah, you can click on that link. You can see that better. Um, so air handling and retries is per state, uh, but we also ha uh, compensation deals with uh, like this as undoing or reverting um, the work that has been performed by a number of states and has been successfully performed. So a very typical scenarios for that is, let's say we, we like you can, you guys can just read that and, and, and see some good examples and, and stuff. But this is a very important feature for workflows uh, and compensation allows you to really do some really cool stuff. And when I was working on that, I figured that it really fits well with our workflow language. And the way I've tried to define it here that please you look at it and read it and give your comments uh, really fits <laughs> our language already. So this is just another feature that we wanted to add uh, to our language for users to be able to do. Um, compensations uh, can be triggered by either transitions uh, or end definitions. And there's some rules about states. They are uh, compensating states and stuff like that all in the PR as well. If you look down, there's some images as well that describe how compensation should be executed and things like that. What would happen to the workflow data? Would that revert to the step that it points to so that it if you go down, you look at the pictures, I think it clear more down, okay. more down. Mm -hmm. So let's, a little more down, sorry. All right, so let's take a look at this picture. Uh, this kind of describes it if you, we wanna talk about it. So a workflow uh, has its control flow logic. This is uh, uh, shown by the blue states and the start and the end definitions. These are the states that are defined in our states array and are part of the control flow logic. The uh, ones with the red border are ones that have already successfully completed. So at, this is just an example. When we come to the end definition or the orange circle, uh, we want to actually compensate. And so we have a flag in the end of definition called, uh, I changed this, I need to update this image. You just go compensate, not compensate before. I, I need to update the PR, sorry. And at which point we, want to compensate the already uh, completed states, which means we go in reverse order and we first are going to see the E state, which does not define its compensation. So we 
doesn't need to be compensated. We go to D and it has one state which is meant for compensation. So that will be executed. Then we go to B, which has defined two compensation states. And then A doesn't. C, even though it does define a compensation state, cannot be compensated because it was never active during workflow execution. And if you scroll a little bit down, so the, yeah, this is the actual, if we look at the workflow execution logic, this is what compensation does. It basically goes from, you know, the states as, as it would complete it, then, it, then the gray ones are the ones they're compensated in reverse order. And after compensation is done, we continue either if it's defined via transition to, to execute the transition, or if it's defined in an end definition to end workflow execution. Does that help? And I know it's a, it's a kind of hard concept and it's, it's, it's pretty complex at times or can be, but it's actually pretty simple. So I'll give you guys time to look at it and, and think about so it. So is it something similar to the Saga pattern? Actually, that is Saga pattern uh, is a buzzword for compensation, yes. Okay, great. Um, that is this one. So, yeah, sorry. So how is how are the states defined? Maybe you went through that, but um, let's say that uh, if we go through the states, what is the deciding state? If you apply for all the compensation, is there a sequence in which we define the compensation? If something fails, do we retry during compensation? Definitely. Uh, that's one part of the um one of the bullet point right in our agenda today if we have time um i did create a demo that shows uh air handling and retries as far as uh, that goes and i can show it uh today if you guys would like to uh, but compensation does not have deal with um specific errors the air handling is in serverless workflow per state. So it's each state defines its own air handling and retries. Compensation is more on overall workflow level where you want to undo what has been done in some cases. So it's a business logic decision, not triggered by events or uh, data. Um, so it's not a dynamic. You have to specifically say that based on your full control flow logic and your, your your execution at this point you want to actually trigger <laughs> compensation so it's kind of related but not really to air okay. but yeah get, get, look take a look at it and maybe next week we can we can get some feedback if if people had time to look Yes, and then to the next bullet, I mean, yeah, there's subscriptions, but also uh, workflows can um, produce events. So question is whether the workflow should also be registered in uh, discovery API then as a producer of events. Okay, yeah. Okay, um, so error handling and retries for service calls, which is the, the next bullet point. Um, I'd really like to do that today. Um, right now, I'm not sure if we should discuss uh, incubation before or after. Uh, I just put the, I mean, this is an ongoing topic. So maybe the only thing uh, I added was uh, the, the link to the graduation criteria. And then before we apply, I think we have to check those. And then, um, yeah, so this is ongoing. And then, yeah, we can actually do that. I, I'd love to. I also, I noticed um, the video you put on the on YouTube and referenced in our Slack channel. That's uh, the content for today's uh, hands-on, right? If you want to, uh, we can go through the PRs first because I think two of these PRs mm -hmm. can be merged if we agree on them already. I just you know, so because sometimes, as you guys know, I, I tend to go off and need to be stopped from talking. <laughs> so I'd rather get through those first. Ah, okay, yeah, of course.
So this one is, yeah, let's just look at this. Um, the small changes, I, I put the, uh, some small wording and yeah. I added the, this is just an ordering so people see our community Slack channel first in the list of communication. And then instead of contributors, I put con community contributors, made the wording a tiny bit better. And I put the independent group first, not because they're more important or not, but to show community that yes, you do not have to be associated with a company if you want to contribute to our project. So just show up front, hey, there is a list of independent contributors um, in case people want. So people don't get discouraged because not everybody wants to be associated, you know. Also it's a, its own category. It's not the company independent yeah. that lines up with oh. all the company names. <laughs> we should maybe clarify that. That's a good point. I'm sorry. And when it comes first, I think it's, yeah, clear. Okay. Okay, yeah, this one, I mean, uh, those kind of changes, we used to have a different work mode where we just would merge them, but uh, yeah, let's formally do it. So that's 190. Any objections to merging this? Then I'd say this one is approved. Next, the adding patient onboarding example. That's the one we've seen at KubeCon for those of you who have attended our office hours. So, um, so I think that's also pretty clear. Um, yeah, I need to update it just, uh, Ricardo found some problem with an image. So if, yeah, other than that, it's just the same example. We're gonna look at that today too. It's the patient onboarding thing. And it made sense to add it in our examples as well. I think for the future, what we're going to start doing is, is um, for each of our examples, and we'll talk about it in the future, have actually a run, uh, maybe not part of the specification itself, but have a link to uh, an image, which is uh, an executable. You can deploy it and run that particular example. So people don't have to mm -hmm. stare just at the JSON or YAML, but can also run it as well and test it and that's just an idea for the future okay but that would uh include one reference platform to run it right yeah i will pick just an open source one and just a java based one that i'm also using locally but it doesn't really matter as long as it's runnable and people can play with our examples and not just stare at them, you know? Yep. Yeah, I was just thinking since we're not doing yeah. platform itself, but okay. Um, so the addition of the uh, patient onboarding example, any objections to merging this? Okay, then also approved. And the last one, um, no, that's, that's the open PR on workflow yeah, compensation, yeah. right? And yeah, yeah, okay, this is ongoing. And we'll leave it a little bit more time because it's a spec change. Uh, it's not just uh, contributors or the examples page. So this is, yeah, needs a little bit more time. I agree. Okay. Then we're through with the PRs. Um, shall we have the demo then? The, uh, the deep dive, sorry, the hands-on error handling and retries for service calls. Okay, I'll try to share my screen and see if I have stuff running. Uh, is that okay or if before anybody wants to say anything? Or... Are you going to use up all the time? Then <laughs> probably I should. Oh, no, just 10 <laughs> minutes. I really don't feel. And we also had Malik join. Hi, Mal Malik. Hello, can you Hi, hear me? Malik. Great. Yes. Cool. I really like that last week, last time's demo. That was really nice. So is that what you're saying? You're going to make it as a something like runnable? Uh, the idea is for every example that we have. So we don't want to just have examples that are like, yeah, just there, just text. Uh, in the future, for every single one of our examples, we wanted to have an image built for it that you can deploy and run easily. Makes sense. That's a yeah. good idea. I think that would help the community. Yeah. And make us more look viable than just throwing out some JSON at people, you know? You're right. Makes sense. 
Mm. Okay, Tio, do I need to stop sharing for you to be able to I share? I think you have to stop. For Sorry. You. Sorry. No, no. Uh, all right. Uh, you guys see the screen, I guess? Yes. Yeah. But anyway, so, so what we, I wanted to show is uh, recently we updated before version 0 0.5 release um, error handling. And we also added retries. Now, Jurgen here is, a, is you know, and, and others are also working on adding more stuff to retries and stuff like that, uh, more parameters so that updates are coming, hopefully. Um, and but this is just what we ended up doing is we revamped uh, error handling and, 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 and retries to uh, make sense. And this is just an example. Uh, usually, typically I write all this workflow from scratch. I, I really don't feel like it now, but just to show you guys uh, what it is and the picture is not really much more helpful, but it still shows something. We have a single, uh, uh, basically a workflow here that onboards a new patient. So the way in this demo that I've been kind of using, it does, we have uh, an event state. So in, in serverless workflow, when you define states, just for people that might be new, each state has a type. We currently have nine different state types. And if you guys see the KubeCon presentation, I don't know, but long story short, state is basically we do explicit control for logic and serverless workflow where we define with the type, you know exactly what type of uh, control for logic you're dealing with. So if we have an event state, just, but just looking at it, you know you're dealing with events and something consuming events in this case and performing some actions. So long story short, uh, the start thing, I'm just gonna go for, for people that might be new. Uh, the start definition, each state can say, uh, uh, define a start definition, which means it's the first state that is executed um, when workflow instance is created. In case of event states, however, there are also starting states, workflow instances are actually created on arrival or consuming of a new event. So when uh, an event of new patient event is consumed, right? And this is a, a logical name. You have your event definitions below. If you have questions on that, let me know. So in this case, we're saying when a new patient event is received, a workflow instance is going to be created. And this state is going to perform three actions. In serverless workflow, an action corresponds to an invocation of a distributed service. For that, we see here either can be done sequentially or in parallel. The default for action execution is sequential, so we don't have to particularly define it here, but you can define an action mode here if you want to do it in parallel. The default is sequential, so that's why we don't define the action mode here, just FYI. If anybody cares. Uh, so we have three particular actions. Each one references is a function definition. So to onboard a patient, we have uh, to store the new patient, assign a doctor and schedule appointment. And if you look at some of our other videos and stuff, you will see that we use the open API specification for restful service invocation. So we have, um, we reference, uh, I'll show you guys here in the function definition the path to the actual open API JSON or YAML, if you have that, it's fine. <clears throat> and the unique operation ID of that particular operation of the function needs to be involved. Now, that was the first demo. So I would fire up. Um, so uh, you said the events you were based off the cloud KubeCon, the, the, action, the action type. Uh, the type is the event. And there are nine different types you said. Is that you based off the one of the discussions you said about the KubeCon event, right? I mean, the discussion yeah. that we had. Yeah, do the, you know? Go ahead. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Now you said there are, we just decided on nine or because of it's a standard that you said from the KubeCon? Um, no, we have nine because that's the nine that we have defined. 
Uh, we can add new states if it makes sense further down the line for the specification. Um, initially, uh, uh, we've added things like event state, we added a callback state, we added a switch state, and things like that from, you know, so as we involved the specification to version 0 0.5, it added more control logic blocks that can be expressed via our language, we added more states. So there is not a set number of states. In the future, if we find that there is a particular control for logic thing that we're not covering by the language, you can definitely add to it. Um, does that help? Okay, that helps. Yeah, Perfect. So, so anyways, uh, what I would usually do, caps lock is great. Oh, I didn't start the uh, thing, great. Um, let me just start. So basically what I, what I have, the way I describe error handling and we'll get to it uh, in KubeCon and stuff like that, I didn't show off error handling. I would just have the entire application that runs the workflow and the three services run in the same application. There was no error checking. Uh, so if things fail, basically if the serverless workflow language says that if any exception during workflow execution happens, a runtime exception, that is not handled by the workflow, workflow execution stop. So in case my three services were not available during that presentation, I was pretty much screwed more or less. So what I would usually do is just go to localhost 8080, type in a new patient information, trigger a workflow by sending a cloud event to my MQ, MQTT broker. Uh, that would trigger an instance of my onboarding event and I would just simply call these three services sequentially and get some results. But in real life applications, as we all know, and we're trying to make this uh, working on them every day, this is a demo only, uh, especially since serverless workflow says that we're a language that targets distributed, event-driven and distributed or uh, orchestration of, of events and event-driven distributed services. So we have to deal with errors, no matter what, for if we deal with you know, anything outside of demos, and we also have to deal with recovery. So the way uh, I've extended this demo uh, using a serverless workflow uh, language is the first thing that I've done is add errors. So let's say right now what's happening is my services here are not available. So let, you know, they're not running currently. So once my workflow here tries to actually invoke the store new patient service, it's gonna get a 503 service unavailable error from the HTTP server, right? And how do we deal with that? So we have an on errors array as the specification defined where you can define one or more error definitions. Each error definition has an error parameter and this can be used to be mapped to certain extent, uh, exceptions by the runtime, but it doesn't have to be. It can be a completely logical name. And we also have a code parameter, which can help runtimes to map the specific runtime exception that it receives to uh, what the workflow defines. And the runtime that I'm using here does exactly that. In case of REST invocation, it's going to hold on to the actual HTTP response code it gets from the server and propagate it up on its exception chain and allow me to map my actual 503 error to the actual HTTP response code that was get sent back by, by, by uh, the invo REST invocation response. And that's it. Uh, once we have defined the error, we can either uh, say, okay, if we, or define or catch this error, we can say, okay, we either want to end workflow execution or here you can also define a transition, of course, uh, where if you catch this particular error, you can transition to different parts of your workflow to know how to handle it. For this demo, um, I simply just ended the workflow. Now that's all okay. Catching errors, it's, it's a must in any workflow language. But now with especially distributed systems, we want to recover from them. Uh, what does that mean? Well, in, in this particular case, our services are not available. So we added a retry definition. And what does this mean? We want to, when we catch this error, 
we want to issue retries. And we'll look at how we do that here in a second. And what does it mean? We want to periodically retry uh, the invocation of whichever one of these three services fails. And once, if we are actually successful, so we don't get this error, we want to continue. So let's say the store new patient information services is up. We performed it. We come to assigning the doctor and that service is down. At that point, we will get a 503. We would retry this particular service as per our uh, retry definition. If we're not successful, we will just follow uh, this particular transition to ending the workflow. If we are successful, then we would schedule the appointment and then transition to the states and definition, which is again, ending the workflow. So that's, that's kind of like what I wanted to show in the demo. If we look at our retry definition, our retry definitions are reusable, meaning that you might have multiple error definitions. They want to have the same retry. So it makes no sense to put them all over the place again and again. And in this case, we give our retry uh, definition a logical name, which has to match this one, of course, that we're referencing. Uh, there is many parameters and we'll improve it here. And I'm not an expert on retries. That's like Jorgen and the other guys are, are gonna look and, 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 and can explain anything. Like just to show there is like multiplier and jitter. And I think more that we have in issues that we will add in the future. But simply from, you know, we have a delay, which is, uh, this is a duration format. PT3S really means three seconds. So we here define that we want three seconds in between retries and the maximum of number of attempts that we want is 50 in this case, let's say. You can define whatever number you want here as long as it's greater than zero. So that's pretty much it. So in this case, what we have is we catch a 503 error, we're gonna issue retries. And if we're successful, we're just gonna complete workflow execution and if not, uh, we're just going to go ahead and end it. <laughs> so I kind of played around with this. I removed the some of the system printouts, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. But, you know, I don't know if this is actually going to work. I haven't tested this in a couple of days, but I hope so. So let's say we had a John, a patient. I usually use this. We're going to start a workflow instance. Uh, the services are down, right? So our workflow should be doing our retries now. And let's say he has chest pain. So I'm starting a new workflow instance. And my services are not running right now. So our workflows are every three seconds trying and retrying uh, and trying the retries, getting a 503, issuing a new retry. So what I'm going to do is start my services back up. And just to show you the retries kind of work, I hope. All right, so now what happens is if you see, we, we added two new patients. So our workflow retries have uh, tried and once the services are back up, the next retry was successful. And if we update the result, we see our workflow says onboarded both of the patients. So that's kind of like an example that with serverless workflow, you can easily define air handling and recovery via, via retries. So that's really all I had. <laughs> Any questions? No. No, that's, no. Um, I mean, the only thing that I still have in mind since before KubeCon is the, uh, the use of code and the name and whether or not this could somehow be used to uh, refer to uh, response object ID in the uh, open API spec or these sort of things, but yeah. yeah. But if for this runtime, I'm using this uh, mapping, it's already done for you. So at some runtimes, they might have you uh, have some specific mapping that you have to define. But for, for the one I just for HTTP, like you said, you know, you, you actually gave me that idea. We just added that, hey, it's a HTTP response code, just propagate it up and don't force the user to map those but for others yeah they, they, there is mapping necessary
Okay, any other, any other questions? Then thanks again, Tiumia. Um, that was really cool to see in, in action. I mean, <laughs> it uh, happens a couple of times that your microservices are just not up and uh, able to receive the call. I mean, uh, unless you're using an uh, Ingress solution like Gnative or, yeah, I mean, this is really cool to have some error handling uh, demoed and yeah. Okay, so the issue on the JSON patch schema, we cannot discuss this week as uh, Ricardo is not here, but um, is there anything that we have? Yeah, well, let me get to the uh, same last point. Is there any other business for today's meeting? No, then I believe we can close early. Final roll call. Oh, sorry, yeah, I please go ahead. So. I wanted to just ask, like, I know since we have a couple of new people here, I, I, I think we're always interested, interested to know, okay, from what type of uh, industry you guys are looking for uh, at serverless workflow language and what kind of situations. And if you're willing to share and, and if that's okay, it's, it's really cool to hear those things because it helps us out kind of understand the community in general that's around the specification. I mean, I can start quickly. Just a short one. We found this. Um, this is who okay again? If I'm starting. Uh, Jens. Jens, okay. Um, we started this two weeks ago and we, we, we found that basically by accident is still a little bit hidden um, in the CNCF. And um, at the moment, we're playing around. Yeah, just to give you the state where we are, we're just playing around and we just read, read the spec. And we are trying. That's why I asked where can we ask questions, Slack and or uh, GitHub. Um, some things um, are not clear to us at this stage, um, but we're just like gathering, gathering all these questions and, and yeah, I think firing them off. Um, hopefully, we are at this stage next week to. Um, um, asked non-stupid questions uh, that's the goal <laughs> um yeah and we would use it most likely internally at this stage thank you cool yeah i mean just to share like currently we have a couple of business automation uh teams looking at this and and you know that's as far as the information i mean if one of the things we're looking for is to promote the specification. So if you like it, of course, please give us a star on <laughs> GitHub. Yeah. That's a big one. Uh, and in the future, we hope that we have on our website a section of uh, different um, companies that, and how, just a generic thing, like how they use the specification. That's a big thing for us, uh, whether you actually use it or not, if you have something good to say, that would be great to promote it uh, for the specification to grow the community. So if anybody here that has been here for a month or, or just joined um, feels okay with sharing some whatever information about how they, what they're thinking about it or how they might consider using it, please share that with us. And, and if that's something that you feel comfortable about us maybe using as a somewhat of a promotion for the specification to help us out, that would be great. Yeah, this is Tamer, this is Malik again here. I'm, I'm just gonna describe about our situation or what we're trying to do. So just before that, I want to quickly understand at a high level, is this you were doing this uh, Tamer with your own interest or you have been tasked to do it? How does it work? I just want to understand Definitely. the whole thing. Uh, definitely. So uh, to kind of understand serverless workflow, it is a CNCF project. So it is completely vendor neutral and it's completely platform independent. And that is what the specification actually tries to do. It is very similar to a cloud events. We actually are in the same working group as the cloud events team. Uh, and the specification came from the serverless work working group at CNCF. Uh, if you want to know my personal involvement here, I'm a com community contributor 
I've been working on this on my spare time and we do not, me or anybody else involved, represents their company here. We do have a company as far as representation from the community involvement. Uh, it's completely not mandatory, but uh, if this is a workflow language, it specifies, so it's a DSL more or less that we're creating. We're also creating a, a ecosystem around the project such as uh, language extensions and some tooling support, uh, also the SDKs for different languages. Uh, in order, and the main thing that we're trying to solve is to have a vendor neutral workflow language in the domain of orchestration of uh, events and event driven uh, distributed systems. So we have a very niche target domain that we're specifying. So we're not trying to replace other workflow languages. We're not trying to, to say which one is better. That's not our business. Our business is to be the best and have a specification that's used, driven by the community uh, rather than uh, individual companies to create a best language for this specific domain. Uh, so yeah, from my perspective, I'm not doing this because I'm asked to, I'm doing this out of passion. Uh, and I think everybody else that has been involved is the same. Does that help? Okay, cool, yeah, that will help, that helps actually. Yeah. So yeah, everybody here is just doing with their own, our own personal interest. That's what I understand. Yeah, that is your personal interest. And the one thing that, that is important about this project that I think and maybe you share this uh, uh, thought with me or not. And you can, of course, everybody has their own opinion. But one important thing is that no, not only is this a vendor neutral and based on CNCF or is a CNCF project, but this workflow language is fully community driven. So anybody, any one of you or your companies or anybody might join later has equal rights and can contribute and drive our vision forward. It is not something that is driven by some companies where you must have like three years of attending meetings to even have a say. No, we're a small community and we welcome everybody. And really that's how we work. Um, anyway, of course we have CNCF code of conduct and rules that CNCF of course provides, but those are our limitations as far as that goes. <clears throat> So uh, to to quickly understand summarizing this, um, I, I cannot summarize. So if somebody can summarize, that's great. But what I want to know is that what would be the output of this? Is that a, just a specification that someone else will implement? Or is that with a, some sample implementation that we will have this, the serverless workflow? Or is that somebody else, the products will implement these ones? Uh this is a specification that defines the, the workflow language or the domain specific language for the target domain, right? We do not have a runtime implementation. If tomorrow's, uh, you know, there are other CNCF projects such as Argo and which other ones, uh, Manuel Brigade, I think. And there are some many workflow runtime engines out there. There are, dealing with many different kinds of workflow languages. Uh, serverless workflow languages is, is, can be either adopted by the existing uh, workflow runtimes, such as for example, what we might, I know some people are, or even what I'm working at a Red Hat, that's what kind of is happening. Um, I don't know for others specifically, but it can also be adopted as the language for a new runtime implementation. But no, we don't, intend to provide, a def there might be a default runtime implementation if there is a CNCF project that, that chooses to do so. But we will not promote or make a default uh, some vendor, you know, specific one. Uh, we will always promote vendor, uh, how do you say, runtimes, uh, they use it on our website, but we will not push them in any sort of way or no runtime or one runtime can have influence on the on the outcome or the the long term goals of the specification or short term really. Got it. And did you say that um, you are some somehow we had some discussions with the pivotals the cloud state .io? No. Um, do you do you know that there is an effort going on with the cloud state from the light band the cloud state something. They are on to define. 
um, the event processing on the cloud. No. From this is from Pivotal, or the. Yeah, I'm panel. aware of uh, yeah, of the of the effort. So they had several cube controls. It's a very interesting server stateful serverless project. Um, but so far they haven't come up. I I'm not monitoring it closely, but they haven't come up with like a universal uh, workflow language. I don't know how much they are implementing anything, or if they are also coming up uh, with their own workflow language. So that's a little bit of the problem that we see is that. Uh, there are purpose-built platforms like Tekton, for example, for CI CD. Argo started as a, a CI or a CD tooling and uh, has been used for more than that. Uh, has a pretty neat uh, custom resource definition driven a language. Um, but yeah, and then there is of course the Amazon States language for the Amazon step functions. Uh, which I think also inspired this language, uh, but there is no uh, independent from the tooling or from the purpose-built platform a workflow language that just tries to capture the uh, orchestration. So I, from my company, I'm, uh, Nokia Bell Labs um, research, so that's corporate research. It's not anything product-backed. Uh, but long term, I'd be hoping to have this as an orchestration language in the CNCF that is implemented by more than one engine. So that there are uh, sufficient providers or community support uh, to to have this as an orchestration language. Okay. I'm trying to understand how this this will fit in. Like, well, if we choose, I know that we are planning to implement something. That, again, I'm this is Malik from American Express. We have uh, quite a bit of workflows internally. Right, we use the starting from small workflow products to even a bigger workflow engines. We use kind of variety of things, but we want to use something on the cloud that is for the functions to build something similar to it. We wanted to figure out, you know, what options we have. We are, we are on the verge of kind of implementing either, we have an option to go with an existing workflow engine and fit our functions to it, or retrofit our functions to work with existing engines, or we can go with a newer approach using, uh, not to name any, like uh, we are still trying to figure out what would be the best implementation engine to use it for the cloud workflow you can say so again we looked at cloud state it's in, still in primitive state uh, netflix conductor is good as an implementation i'm just alluding to here i know that there's nothing to do with here but i'm just saying and then we also looked at other competitive products uh, we're not you know finalized anything on that so by the way that's what we are trying to as much as possible see what options we have to contribute to come up with a, you know maybe this solution that that you get trying to do it and then have one of the engine implemented i um, how how to put this all together and how long it's going to take it's okay that question i don't know the answer it answer to that yet that was nice thanks for sharing that yeah um, yeah, yeah, I think when, I'm good. Kasi yeah. is also working on the same front. Yeah, I'm also in Malik, so yeah, <laughs> great. We are we're from the same team here. Yeah, trying to figure out. So, thanks for looking at us. I mean, here, you know, you guys can look at what we have, ask any questions, contribute as much as you feel, and look at the things that you might see missing that the specification might not be implementing, and then we'll definitely put those on the radar as well. So, yeah, I mean. Thank you and and yeah. If you if you want some comparisons, we do have some comparisons to the, for example, comparisons to Brigade and Argo. But uh, it would be nice to also have a kind of comparison examples like what we already started with with maybe some other workflow languages that will help the community kind of take a look at those and 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 be able to quickly see the differences, the commonalities and things like that that make a good decision about where they want to go moving forward. Cool. And uh, where do you said you have the comparisons for Argo and Brigade? 
if you go to our specification project under examples directory, you will see three files. So, uh, one is in the readme is also uh, there. You'll see uh, examples.md, which is the uh, serverless workflow examples that we have. And then there should be examples dash Argo and examples dash brigade documents. You mean under the, in, in the GitHub or the serverless workflow? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, cool. There you go. Um, examples brigade, okay. Yeah, we'll be happy if you have some other ones, work for languages, uh, bring them up, up, raise an issue and, and we can start looking at those. Or if you wanna help us pick examples and stuff like that and work with, you know, we can work on this together to create some other comparisons as well. Okay. Yeah, this is awesome. We, yeah, when we progress like next week or a week after, we'll bring some more information to what we have done it here. And of course, we'll be able to pitch in more here when we talk about it. This, this, is, this is good, actually. I went through uh, to him more. I'm saying your name correctly. I went through your reference recommendation. You guys have done an awesome job so far. So, well, from the red hat. So, <sighs> Yeah, thanks. There is also some other open source Java. Most of the right now are Java based. So hopefully there will be some non Java based runtimes soon that are implementing us as well. But thank you very much. Cool. Jurgen has been quiet today. I'm scared. Just listening. <laughs> Something is coming. Okay, that's great. Um, then if there are no more questions or issues. I close today's call. Thanks everyone for sharing. That last round was really nice. Um, and hope to see you next week. Okay. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.